Here's what I want you to do. I want you to just close your eyes. Well, you can have your eyes open too because we're doing a sermon series, Pray With Your Eyes Open. So let, 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 let me stop. <laughs> let me rewind. <laughs> Don't close your eyes. <laughs> and let's pray. I want to pray. I just feel like God wants to do something uh, supernatural and deep in here this morning. And I want to give him space. The longer I walk with Jesus, the more I realize he leads me. I don't lead him. (laughs) And I would rather have the Holy Spirit show up than me just get up here and talk. All right. So let's just pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you today and we just thank you for the tremendous opportunity to just gather as a family. Lord, you've already shown up. And with your presence here this morning, I'm so thankful that you're the reason why we gather. Oh, Jesus, what you have done in and through our lives is amazing. Grace that we didn't deserve, wisdom that we couldn't uh, come up on our own, healing, strength, anointing, everything we have in need of is found in you, Jesus. May we fix our eyes on you today. All the responsibilities, all the to-do lists, every, everything we need to accomplish after this service will still be there. Let us gather as a family underneath the word of God so that you could give us some direction, some insight, some encouragement, some strength. And we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you want, turn to your Bibles in the Gospel of John chapter 9. If not, grab a note right next to you. We'll make it easy for you. And then if you want to, you can go on version uh, to be in our passage this morning. Let me catch you up in, gos- in the Gospel of John chapter 9. There's a chapter 8 before chapter 9, so let me kind of tell you what's going on in chapter 8. Jesus declares in chapter 8 that he is the light of the world. It's one of the seven I am in the gospel of John. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He shares and declares this I am statement about himself, and then it causes problems, and it causes significant problems. He gets into a pretty, 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 (laughs) pretty bird, pretty bird, a pretty heated discussion. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm on today. I'll tell you that right now. He gets in a pretty uh, uh, colorful discussion with the Pharisees. Matter of fact, this, this thing goes back and forth. What I love about Jesus is he wasn't, he wasn't uh, intimidated by anybody. He would go after it. You know, like the Pharisees would say something and he'd be like, yeah, all right. Well, what about this? And what about this? What about this? And they would come back. And so this discourse in chapter 8, you read it today after church, is is really interesting. Matter of fact, towards the end of chapter 8, they have accused Jesus of being possessed by the devil. Like he's, he's possessed. Then they get to the point where they get so ticked off at him that they want to stone him. Right? So they get ready to stone Jesus, and he does this great thing anytime he gets everybody, he gets the Pharisees all riled up, and then he just kind of like, peace out. And moves on. And so that's kind of where we pick up in chapter 9. Now, I want to talk to you this morning on the first 12 verses of chapter 9, and we'll pick up uh, right here. Here we go. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. He saw a man blind from birth. If I was going to uh, title this message, Pray With Your Eyes Open, the title of this message would would be Believe With Your Eyes Open. Believe With Your Eyes Open. Jesus saw the man born blind. You ever notice that Jesus sees things you don't see? Or even how he sees isn't how we see. You know, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's the perfect representation of God on earth. And so when he sees the blind man, he doesn't see a blind man. He sees a man that is healed. You ever wonder uh, how the kingdom operates? In Romans, it, it gives us a little indicator. It says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. 
If Jesus embodied the kingdom, which he did, and he's living on earth, when he saw something, he saw it as it should be, not how it was. Right? He saw it right. You and I have seen the kingdom all around us. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. The kingdom of God is is at hand. It's right now. But sometimes we don't really know what that looks like. You know what it looks like? It looks like when somebody is in the tank and they get baptized and that feeling you have of, yeah, that is right. Or that that wedding you go to with a man and a woman. (laughs) Yeah. I ain't scared. And you sit there with your bride and you just feel this is right. They're making a covenant between God. Wow, this is right. You see, we see the kingdom all the time, but we just don't kind of recognize it. I want to I want to challenge you this morning to begin to see the kingdom of God because what it does is is it is it causes us to believe things believe for things. Jesus believed and then he saw. I would say believing is seeing. So as you pray with your eyes open, I want you to believe with your eyes open. I want you to believe and then see. Because it's in the activation of your faith. James says this, faith without works is what? Dead. So believing is this faith, this understanding that God has said something, therefore it is, a, it is true and it can be a reality. As we pray with our eyes open, we must pray and believe and then we will see. This is what Jesus did. Jesus walked on the earth and did exactly what the Father said because he saw saw the right thing that was supposed to happen, and then it happened. And as we approach something, and in this particular case, I believe, I don't know, I studied the scriptures. Uh, Some people agree with me, some people don't. I'm going to agree with the ones that agree with me. (laughs) That was funny. (laughs) But Jesus saw the blind, the 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 man born blind from birth already healed. Now look, let's go to verse number two because the disciples ask a question to Jesus. Now here's your second point. If you ask the wrong question, you're gonna get the wrong answer. Have you ever asked Jesus the wrong question? Where did that get you? Well, we can take comfort in the disciples. If I could encourage you this morning, read, your, read the Gospels and just be comforted by the things the disciples said. And then be humbled because you are one too. All right. So here's what the disciples said. Verse number two. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, which means Lord, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The disciples didn't ask Jesus, why was this man born blind? They, they assumed the reason why this man was born blind was because he sinned or his parents sinned. What the disciples were operating out of in their life was something that is called dogma, which is assumed belief about something. And the Pharisees had the word of God, but they had interpreted the word of God and assumed things that were that that are not correct. You and I need to be careful when it comes to dogma and, and, and be very careful about doctrine. Those are just fancy words saying that if you are underneath these assumed beliefs and you're operating under assumed beliefs about how things are supposed to happen, then you might, it will lead you to a, to a, in a direction of misunderstanding. Does that make sense? And so as believers, we need to be careful. Uh, what are the questions we, we, we ask Jesus? Like, for instance, if the disciples had said, Jesus, why was this man born blind? That 
is a very direct question, and it doesn't assume the reason. Does that make sense? And so Jesus answers these disciples by saying this, and I want to, if, if there's anything, this would be something I would want to uh, teach you this morning about this particular verse that has caused people problems. Verse number three. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, there's a couple issues in the NIV that I have with the NIV in this particular passage. First of all, this statement, but this happened, should not be in that text. Secondly, there's a period that should be taken away. All right? Now, look at your notes right now, or your device, and let me read it to you, and then make an observation. So, the disciples asked, who sinned? This man, his parents, that he was born blind. This is how the text should read. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. What's the big difference in that particular case? If it's punctuated this way, the text implies not that the man was born blind so that the works of God may be revealed in him, but that Jesus had to carry out the work of God while it was day so that God's work might be shown in the life of the man born blind. That's good stuff right there. All right. Secondly, let's pick up the story and I'll make some some points here. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with saliva, and put it in the man's eyes. <laughs> Jesus broke like a million rules right there. <laughs> First of all, he does this on a Sabbath. We all know, Pharisees, you can't do anything on Sabbath, right? So that's one rule. Second thing he broke was that he was actually, some, some people actually thought, that it was, it was uh, uh, magic if they, sp- if they put mud and water together and put it on people's eyes, that it was actually like healing. So Jesus actually committed sorcery. Ooh. <laughs> right? So he, 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 he does this. Here's, here's another thing that I think is cool about Jesus. This man born blind, like... Not only could he not see, but he was an outcast, treated horribly, had to beg for everything he got. Matter of fact, everybody looked at him like he sinned and did something against God, like he deserved being blind, like this was his fault. So he got kicked. He got spit at. Check this out. Jesus uses uh, uh, dirt and then saliva. He uses the very thing that people did against him to bring glory for him. Woo! In your life and in my life, there are things the enemy has set up that Jesus is going to tear down and then bring glory because of that in your life. Come on, somebody, grab a hold of that. You might be struggling now, but the deliverer is here. Oh, and he's about to flip the script in your life. Shoot, I was an alcoholic for 10 years. I've ministered to more alcoholics than I know about. Why? Because the deliverer set me free, and the little snare that the enemy set to knock me off of what God has called me to do, he has used it to help people get free in Jesus' name. Come on, man, that's some good stuff. That's why you read the word. Right there, it's good. Verse number seven. He said, go. (laughs) Go. Don't allow the simplicity of that word to trip you up. Some of you came in here this morning, and here's the word you need. You could get up and leave, but please don't. (laughs) Might be something else Jesus has for you. What is he saying to you today? He's saying, go. It's time, church, that we become contributors, not consumers. 
It's time, church. You know all that you need to know. And if you don't know it, he's going to tell you on the way to doing it. Because Jesus will do you before he teaches you. And a lot of you are struggling because you're sitting and you're not moving. And Jesus is saying, go, go, church. Go. You have enough. You've been in enough Sunday school classes. You know your Bible. And if you don't, you have access to the Bible. Get going. Get up and start moving because things are about to happen. So he tells the blind man, he says, go wash in the pool of Shalom. Shalom. I I looked that word up and I had it pronounce it to me and I still forget it. Struggle is real, my friends. This word means sent. It's interesting how, how the writer of the gossip, John, says sent. Like, the disciples are known as the sent ones. I think that's pretty interesting. All right, let me move on. You didn't look like you liked it as much as I did. So, <laughs> so the man went. Jesus said go, and the man went. Check this out. This man cannot see. He's got mud on his eyes. Jesus says, go. Listen, see, uh, believing is seeing. This, my, this blind man that couldn't see believed that he would see. How do you know? Because Jesus told him to go and he went. You see, seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. And he came home seeing. He came home seeing. Do you sometimes, oh, I had this thought in prayer. Uh, we're, we're on a 21 day fast and we pray. Well, I don't pray at six in the morning. <laughs> the church is open at six in the morning and the church is open at six in the evening to pray. And so I've been attending most of the evening sessions And I was in uh, prayer the other day, and the Holy Spirit said, the reason why you sometimes feel unsettled is because you know that I have settled it. And I never had that thought before. Have any of you ever felt unsettled? Right? Right? And so I started thinking about being unsettled and not the context of, hey, this is how I operate. I'll just be real with you. I would just try not to feel unsettled. You know what I'm saying? Almost like I was doing something wrong. Like the, you know, I'm not in perfect peace. I'm feeling unsettled. So therefore, this is, this is not of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Get all away from me, you know? And the Lord is saying, no, 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 no. The reason why you feel unsettled is because you know I have settled it. And that means you have a part to play. That's where the kingdom comes. The righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. You see, I think believers sometimes know the word, but we don't actually believe it. And there's a difference between knowing and believing. My challenge for you today is to believe with your eyes open. Believe and then you will see. I remember a few years ago, I had an interaction with my wife uh, uh, that, was, that was positive, ended up being positive. But how many have been here married for a minute? Have you been married for a minute? <laughs> you, you ever hear this statement? I will believe it when I... Ooh. I know some of guys are like, ah, I'll believe it when I see it. And I remember having an inter- uh, interaction with Jamfer. There was, there was something that, that I kept uh, doing that I knew I wasn't supposed to do. D- does anybody else have these scripts that play out in your life? You find, no, no, nobody in here. I'm just the only one real. All right. You find these scripts operating in your life. You 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 know, but you still do the wrong thing. 
And so this caused a little bit of friction in my marriage because I would say something that I believed, but that wasn't right. Does that make sense? Like it would just come out. And I remember thinking to myself, Jennifer said, you know, I said, baby, I'm going to (laughs) change. I got this girl. We're going to move past this. I take full, like, I have no problem taking responsibility for stuff. I'm just, I take full responsibility for it. I'm going to fix this. (laughs) I'll believe it when I see it. She was kinder than that. But I remember leaving the house feeling unsettled. And I went to Starbucks. I mean, like Starbucks. I love Starbucks. They were closed this morning when I first went by there. And it was the first I had to ask for forgiveness for them. All right. Just right off the bat. (laughs) It's like not even six o'clock in the morning. I'm already asking for forgiveness for these people that aren't at their job. All right. Push pause. Let's go back. So. I'm in the parking lot of Starbucks, and I'm sitting there all by myself, and I feel unsettled, and it's because of this interaction. There's this script that is playing in my life that I know is not the preferred future for my life. Like, it doesn't line up with Scripture, but it's what I believe, so I'm seeing it. If I believed what Jesus said, then I wouldn't be seeing what I'm seeing. So I'm sitting in the parking lot and I'm like, Jesus, I need you and I need you now. Do you pray prayers like that? I wasn't out in the parking lot. I was in my car. I need you to talk to me now. 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 And he gives me a scripture. That was the exact scripture that I knew the scripture. I preached the scripture. I can teach you on the scripture, but I didn't necessarily believe the scripture. And he brings this scripture into my mind. And in that moment, I said, I believe. I believe. Checkmate, Jesus, you got me. (laughs) I believe I believe something in my life for that particular issue (laughs) there is more issues for that particular one though it's stuck and I remember going home to Jennifer and I said baby you're never going to have to worry about that again I think it was two years ago. You've never had to worry about it again. You can ask her later. She doesn't know what I'm talking about. Because there's all other issues. (laughs) No, she's sweet. She's never had to worry about that script again. Do you know why? Because I believe it. And I see it. When you believe... You will see. I have seen this in in, in individuals' lives. Blows me away. They'll lose a loved one. They'll have something something that is that that is terrible that happens in their life, right? And then you get around them and they say this statement, but God is still good. How can you say that? You're going through the hardest thing. Man, don't you put, sometimes you'll put yourself in their situation. What would I do if I was in their situation? Well, if you believe he's good, you'll say that he's good. Right? Right? So when we see, we need to see from a place of belief. It's not good enough just to know the scripture. That's not going to move mountains. That's not going to bring deliverance. That's not going to bring healing. It's no, it's believing in what Jesus has purchased for us to walk in. Believing 
is seeing. Now listen, you have a God that loves you. Jesus, I mean, pa- Jesus, I just called you Jesus. That's good. That's a good compliment there, Pastor Ken. <laughs> Pastor Ken just said how much God loves you. How much he adores you. So do you think that he can handle a little bit of your unbelief? Do you think he could handle a little bit about of your misconceptions of what really is real? Do you think you could get to a point in your relationship with Jesus that you could be real enough to admit, I don't really believe this and I need your help walking this in my, out in my life. Now imagine how that will change your life. That you would slow down before you would speed up. That we wouldn't be like the disciples that just said what was assumed and not what we really believe. And God is calling us to be people of faith that walk it out. Let's pick up the story and then I'll lay in this plane. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I'm the man. I think that's how he said it. (laughs) How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go there and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. This is hilarious. Verse number 12. Where is this man, they asked. I don't know. Because I was blind. I had mud on my eyes. (laughs) What is wrong with you people? (laughs) But check this out. In your life, there will be people that see And then we'll believe what God is doing in your life. And then there will be people that will see and won't believe. But you and I, we're going to believe and then see. You have direct access to the throne room of God. And if God says you're going to do something, then he is more than able to put that forth in your life. I think in the church and in our world, the fear of man is one of the biggest snares that we run across because we're so worried about what somebody else will see or believe from our life instead of getting a firm word from King Jesus and saying, you know what? I believe it and I'll see it. And sure, there'll be some people that will say, oh, wow, I now do believe you're anointed. Well, great. Great. (laughs) Thank you so much. And then there will be others that it doesn't matter what you do, they're still going to hate on you. And I'm not saying you don't be under a submission. I'm not saying you're not humble. I mean, read the Bible. But if Jesus said he's going to do it in your life, then get on board with it and begin to walk it out. Go. What are you waiting on? If you're waiting on me, go. Go. Break the limits off your life. In this particular passage, the fear of man was all over their parents, wasn't it? it, it you can read it after, after uh, church. Uh, the, the blind man then gets all caught up with the Pharisees because they're trying to say, how did all this happen? And then they call in the parents. What do the parents say? Ask him. They were so scared of the Pharisees that they wouldn't even take up for their own son. You don't think the fear of man is robbing from you. Shoo. If we are so concerned about what people think of what God is saying in our lives, man, you are going down the wrong path. And if you don't know what Jesus wants you to do, I can guarantee you that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that knows you better than you know yourself, that knows the tomorrow, yesterday for, you know, the uh, 
what's going to happen in the future. He will clarify what you need to do. Don't allow the fear of man to trip you up. Don't be swayed by what people think. And then Jesus finishes. Jesus is a great finisher, isn't he? Verse 35, Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? You know, what's interesting about the blind man. He gets thrown out. I mean, he it didn't even bother him. He's like, you're throwing me out now. At least I can see where I'm going when you throw me out. <laughs> You've been throwing me out all my life. And now I can see where I'm getting thrown. Peace out, people. All right. So Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now. You have now seen You have now seen. You didn't see me before, but now you see me. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, and I love this, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. I believe. I wonder if you could stand up this morning. You don't have to. If you're tired, stay seated. Free country. I believe. I believe. Say that with me. I believe. Come on, church. Say it again. I I believe. I believe. Say it like you mean it. I believe. Yeah, I'm purposely having you repeat it until you believe it. Say, say, I believe. What do you believe? <laughs> do you believe Jesus is alive? Yeah. I say it, say it with me. I believe he's alive. Do you believe Jesus still heals? Yeah. I believe he heals. Look, I'm telling you, online, in the balconies, here on, on the floor, the world has tried to steal your belief. And Jesus is here to restore it today. Like it's time now that you begin to believe and there's power in the declaration. Do you need him to be your healer? All you need to do is say, I believe you are my healer. I believe. Say it with me again. I believe. I believe in you, Jesus. All across this room. If you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, I just want you to begin to pray. I feel the atmosphere is about to shift. The atmosphere is about to shift. If you know how to press in, press in. Press in right now. We believe in you, Jesus. I believe. My family and I, we believe in Jesus. (laughs) We believe he still raises the dead. We believe he still heals. We believe he, it is his pleasure to destroy the works of the enemy. We believe that he is the great victor, that he is our commander in chief. We believe, we believe, we believe. We believe. My family believes. Say that with me. My family believes. My family believes. When everybody else doesn't believe, we believe that God is still the miracle worker. When we can't see, we still believe we're about to see. We still believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Let the Lord just correct your understanding that you are called to live by faith. You are called to live by faith. Look, I might not see it with my natural eyes, but I believe that God is about to do something in this place. I believe it. I believe. I believe. When I don't have strength to believe, I believe. When I'm weary and tired, I believe that you're more than enough, Jesus. When I'm confused and perplexed, I still believe that you're the Son of God. I still believe. I believe. I believe. 
I believe. You first must believe. You, you, you must believe to be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. All across this room, I don't know where you are, where you stand with Jesus, but if you haven't accepted Jesus in your life, today is your day to believe. Today is your day to believe. Today is your day, but I'm going to count the three. And if you just want to give your heart to the king, he did for you what you can never do for yourself. He died and God raised him from the dead. And when you believe in him, you have new life. The old is gone. The new is here. There's this relationship and this love that you, that you, will, uh, that you need to experience as you come to him. So all across this room, I'm just going to count to three. One. There's nothing special about this. It's just giving you time to listen to the Holy Spirit. Two, three, all across this room. How many? How many this morning? Online, how many? How many? We need to go, church. If you know Jesus, you need to go. If you believe, the next thing that we need to do is that we need to believe corporately. We need to believe as a church that God is about to move. We need to believe and expect God to do above and beyond more than we can ask, dream, or imagine. We need to begin to believe for the supernatural, for a move of God. We need to begin to corporately unite we're going to unite at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Every tribe, every nation, we can start that right here by, by uh, uniting as a body of believers to believe God to do something, to release something, to be a part of his kingdom, to put, it, to, uh, put all the chips on the table, so to speak. Are you ready to do that? And I believe, I believe the best is yet to come. I believe that some of you need to begin to declare and decree that in this house, this will be a house of healing and restoration. That people far away from God would come in here to hear the message of Jesus. We need to believe and then we'll see. We need to believe there's more than enough finances. We need to believe that God is still at work. He is still moving. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe he's the resurrection and the life. I believe that he is uh, the good shepherd. I believe that he is the light of the world. I believe that everything we have in need of is found in Jesus. I believe, I believe, I believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. Let's just stay here for a second. Some of you, it's time to let go of the past. It's time to turn the page. It's time, it's time for you to allow Jesus to flip the script. I don't know what that means. It might be a relationship. It might be something that has hindered you. You are obsessed with it, and the Lord is saying, in order for you to walk in the new one, in order for you to move on, you need to let go. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Forgive them, set them free. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. 
That freedom is not just reserved for you. That freedom is reserved for the person that sinned against you. You got to let them go. Let them go. Forgive them. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. You can't move on. You can't go because you're stuck in a simple prayer. Just let it go. Some of you are scared to go because your fear of you have a, a fear of change. If you would look at your life, you would realize that Jesus has been changing things the whole time you've walked with him. That's what he does. He moves us from faith to faith to glory to glory. You have to let go and let him lead you into that murky water, into that place that's unclear, that's not defined. But you know that that's where he's leading you. So go, go. It said, he, he told the blind man to go and the blind man went. So go, go forward. I'm going to do this one last thing and then I'll land. Just I'll share some messages. Does anybody in here need healing? I feel like God is in here for healing. Does anybody need healing? Raise your hand real high. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to go near a person that has their hand and put your hand on their shoulder. Let them feel surrounded. Yeah, good. We'll take a moment for this. We have a hand over here. Oh, sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus, the healer. Yeah. Just take your time. Here we go. You can ask them what they need healing for, for uh, specifically if you want. I feel like we, we need a couple more over this with this couple there in the back. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I want them to feel the support. Jesus is about to heal. He's the healer. There you go. Good. There we go. Move, Holy Spirit. 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 Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus for a release of your healing in Jesus' name. And a release of your healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we're not only just asking for healing, we're asking for refreshment in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would overwhelm them with your presence and your joy. Right now, a release, a touch from heaven in Jesus' name. If you're being prayed for, just receive it. Just put your mind in neutral. Just allow the King to do what the King does. You're a great physician, Jesus. We just pray for your healing and your anointing and your peace and your grace and your refresh. I feel like he's refreshing some of you right now. In Jesus. It's a supernatural refreshing. Just lean into it. Don't allow your logic and reason to forfeit what God wants to release in the supernatural to the spiritual, uh, to the spiritual person. The supernatural is natural. So just lean into it. You are a spiritual spiritual being having a human experience. This is God's design for your life. He wants you to gather so that he can deposit things supernaturally in your life. We just pray for that. Whatever they need, it says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Lord, we're knocking on the door of healing this morning. We're knocking on the door of restoration this morning. We're knocking on the door of reconciliation this morning. We're saying, Jesus, open the door. You are the door and release supernaturally right now all across this room. May this be a place where your kingdom is released. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, press in, press in. These altars are open if you want to come. You want to sit, you want to press in. There's no sense in going 21 days without food. And and we're praying to not press into the things of God. You get what you need to get from Jesus today. Don't wait for tomorrow. God is the God of the eternal now. 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 We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Man, do you sense his peace? (sighs) The Prince of Peace. Just settling some stuff in your life. Man, only God can do that, right? That's good. I'm glad I came to church today. (laughs) And Josiah's coming up. Let's just seal this. Oh, man, I feel the authority of God. Mm. Mm. Let him sweep over you, man. He's clearing some stuff out. Some of you have been counseling demons, and you need to just cast them out. Lord, I just pray for a release of your authority in Jesus' name. Lord, that this place would be swept clean in the name of Jesus. That there would the things that have bound us would not bind us any longer. Lord, I just pray for the power of the Holy Spirit, the authority of Jesus, each one of you to experience that, that sweeping presence of his authority. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Release. Release his authority. You have the authority of Christ. You are co-heir of Christ. You need to take this authority. It's not your authority. It's imparted by Jesus in your life so that you can do kingdom warfare in your house and in your marriage. Don't just keep it here. Don't wait for a moment. You need to live out of the authority of Christ in your life. You get what you contend for. You need to start speaking some of that stuff out. Lord, I come against depression in Jesus' name. Lord, I come against suicidal thoughts in Jesus' name. I come against uh, 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 anxiety in Jesus' name, misconceptions in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that this house would be marked by a house of authority in Jesus' name, that people would get delivered just because they're in this room room because the authority of Christ to deliver is in this room. Lord, I speak again bondage in Jesus' name. Somebody in here is struggling with alcohol, and I'm here to tell you that he is giving you the authority. He is giving you the ability to put that down today, symptom-free today. But you got to go. You got to do it. You got to do it, and then you can testify of his goodness, of his grace. We love you, Jesus. Love you, guys.